Today we magnify the name of the Lord. It is a privilege that God has given to us that we can relate with him. And that we can glorify him indeed. But glorifying God is not with our mouths, but with our entire life. Everything we do should move in one direction. In the direction of giving full honor to God, full glory to God. In righteousness and holiness. We are going to read 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. The word that is translated here, slack, in some versions you'll find slow. Actually, most times we tend to think that God is slow, too slow sometimes, unbearably so sometimes. That's how we feel. And if you are going to look at things from your point of view, you're right. Right in the sense that those things are not happening in the times you expected them to happen. What you expected seemed to have failed. In some cases, years have passed. And the thing is not coming out the way you expect. And you think that because you presented the thing to God long since, God has not done anything. He's so slow, he's coming so slow. I like what a man said, God has never been late and never will be late. But the thing is this, why do our things drag? And that's what the next part of that verse says. He says he is long-suffering towards us. Why? Because you have done a thing long since, and it should ordinarily have cast you away. But you have come to plead with him to do one thing or the other for you. And he's waiting for you to rectify that wrong. But you have still not rectified the wrong. You are expecting this one to happen. That's why he says he's long-suffering towards us. Whereas you are here shouting, Lord, do this, do this. And sometimes even turn around to blame him. Since I said this thing, Lord, you have not done it. And we'll compare ourselves to others. You've done so and so for this person, you've done for the other person, you have just left me, I am still here, I am waiting, I am your child, I am crying to you day and night, why is my situation like this? We are into all of those kinds of things. Ordinarily, if it were a human being, you would be annoyed. If it were you, you would have been annoyed. Somebody that has done an extreme thing has not even bothered to think about it, and all he does is to blame you for the one that he is expecting you to do. But you see, God is long-suffering towards us. He waits. That's why he says, I do not desire the death of the wicked. I follow him with mercy to see if he will repent. He's long-suffering. He's following us with mercy. Just gradually to see if you come to the point of acknowledging what you had done and repent from it. Rectifying things, restituting. But no... We are not concerned about all of the things that we had done previously. We are not concerned about the things we are doing at the moment. We are merely concerned with what God is not doing, which is all wrong. Yes, God is long-suffering, but how long? He said, my soul would not contend with man forever, permanently. There's a time at which God says, well, you've done enough, take off. But let's not wait until that point. What am I saying? When you have this request unto God and it looks to you like there is a delay, hold your breaks, check your life. What were you doing? What have you done and left? What are you still doing? And one of the big problems we have is that we are not able to see wrongdoing in what we do. We have the tendency to justify ourselves, to try to blend the situation, to want to think that, well, so long as I did it, it couldn't be wrong. And most probably shifts it to another person. That fellow will have to be the one that bears the blame, not you. And all of those things complicate our situations. So it looks like things are delayed not by God, by us. That's the bottom line. That your request is delayed not by God, but by you. By the life you live. By all of the things that are outstanding, hanging out. Things that need to be restituted. Situations that need to be corrected. Do we correct them? Do we take any action towards that side? My message of today is remove your eyes from what you think God is not doing into yourself, into what you have not done. 
Because when you rectify your ways with God, God handles the rest. In fact, there are so many things that we have asked for from God, which we need not have asked in the first instance, if things were right. If you lead your life unto God, that God has a wonderful testimony of you. Do you think that those things will happen to you? Those things will happen now, because that testimony is not there. When God looks at you and says, this is my beloved child, who is living the way I want. Is that the child that will come to ask for anything? He said, before you even ask, I have answered. Before you pray, I have executed everything. That's the word of God and that's the truth of God. So let's look at our lives. Instead of counting God slow, let's rectify the things that need to be rectified. And one prayer that I would like everybody to pray today is to thank God. For what? For his faithfulness in being long-suffering towards you and I. Pray for yourself that prayer. Because he has borne so much of the disasters that you have created, that I have created, we need to thank him for it. And then repent, turn around. And you might need to ask the Holy Spirit to remind you of all the things that are outstanding in your life. Rectify them. The other things will fall into place. It's not until you ask before God will answer. It is if you do right, God will take care of your situation. And I desire that all of us will get to that point of doing right with God at all times. The scripture says, true righteousness and holiness. And then all other things will be given to us freely. Seek the kingdom of heaven and its righteousness, and all other things shall be added unto you. In Jesus' name. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with you now and forevermore. Amen. It's